<clears throat> welcome, welcome back to another genre with JB. It's been a minute, right? <laughs> or actually, technically, it's only been um, a day because I'm recording this video in advance. And today I wanted to uh, switch gears a little bit. You know, I'm still working on this mule piece here. This is my uh, piece. It's, you know, goes with the, the third installment in the foundation trilogy, um, the second foundation. Uh, we have the mule sitting on his throne with one of his thralls here and he's sort of holding his standard and you know, have the palace on Calgon in the background. So what I did is I sort of based the mule off Adrian Brody. So if I have that picture, it's sort of the, the original reference. And I changed it up a bit. I sort of really pushed the highlights and uh, the darks, which is what you'd want to do in a painting. You'll notice that it's a little bit more of a neutral um, and it's a little bit more desaturated and washed out here. I, I bumped up the saturation and kind of threw things into more of a bright hot key, which when you're doing covers like sci-fi covers and you're trying to really make flesh look dynamic and alive, like it's always good to bring a little bit more heat to the skin. And that's sort of what I'm doing here. I'm actually basing this character off of an old Boris piece, Boris Vallejo. And I don't know if Boris uh, Vallejo, of course, the great master Boris Vallejo has a YouTube channel, but if he does, I'll look that up and put that in the cards because, you know, he's an absolute master and in inspiration and he should be given, uh, you know, the acknowledgement and credit that someone of his stature deserves, right? He's a legend. And, um, you know, he's influenced, clearly has influenced me. And I know if you read the description on this channel, you'll, um, you'll note that in the description, I cite Boris as one of my influences, particularly during the lockdown this past year. I really studied a lot of his work, particularly how he would do faces. And I think some of his older work is more instructive because it's a little bit more accessible. It's a little bit less technical and more brushstrokey and painterly. So you can kind of get into his head a little bit easier with regards to what he was doing. But I'm using the same palette I, I, I used for Mr. Adrian Brody mural, Mule up here. Um, and uh, for, for this sort of Valkyrie or whatever you want to call it, I'm just coming in and, um, you know, just going to basically shift this into more of a green key. Cool. <clears throat> Before I do that, I'm going to switch up my colors here. I'm going to throw a little bit of, uh, of a dull orange on this side of the face. I have to teach a class later, so what I'm going to do is just kind of go in, throw the opacity down. And just today, what I'm going to do is just block in some of the basic shapes of the face, and then next week, will have the I may have the face finished or I might I may take you through the process of me finishing the face but um basically what I do is I just block everything in and then I blend my edges and then I step away come back and I'll see if anything needs to be softened or pushed out and that process is pretty much the same for oil um with oil painting what I'll do is I will cut the paint after I in my first coat, what I'll do is I'll cut it with some linseed to facilitate flow and increase luminosity. And then um, from there, I let it dry and I'll block in my shapes, soften the edges. And then I'll go, usually I'll go back in with a lighter color after it's semi dry. If I need to, if I need to soften things or if I need to, uh, blend edges. There was one painting where I did a glaze over the face to kind of bring things into more of a consistent key after I had painted them initially. And that worked okay. But um, I do have to say that I, you know, painting on the computer is, I do think it's significantly easier than, than you know, painting with traditional oils. I love oil painting though. And um, I do plan on going back to do some oil works in oil. So but no, Boris is great. He did a lot of series. I did a, I did a painting that was sort of an homage piece 
uh, you know, based on his work on the Palouse Star series, I did an homage, a Boris Vallejo homage, where I like a cave woman and she was battling a saber-toothed cat, but I never finished it. <laughs> it was one of the pieces I, one of the many pieces I started and never finished over lockdown. And um, really just, oh, I'll redo that, really just incredible, incredible control of figure, shape language, um, you know, incredible at translating, you know, lights into values that look dynamic and natural, but at the same time, just heighten the, heighten the heroic quality of the figure. He's trying to get across. Um, and um, yeah. Uh, just kind of coming in here. And of course, I'm not trying to stress this, like my piece is not going to look exactly the same as Boris's piece, right? And that's okay, because I'm not Boris. I am James, so I want to uh, keep that in the back of my mind as I'm working on these things. And then, you know, also just lay, it's time to lay in some eyebrows. really great though at just getting expressions um and his wife julie bell is also an incredible artist who i was not aware of um you know i well i wasn't aware of a lot of the sort of background of boris i was just i was always aware of his work but i was not aware that he was married or i was not aware that his wife was you know, also a very accomplished artist in her own right. And I was also not aware that they're both really into bodybuilding, but it makes sense based on his, you know, 90s Marvel work. I mean, I had I had those, you know, Fleer Ultra X-Men Marvel card sets from back in the day. And like, I used to like ogle over Boris's artwork back then. And, you know, I think like sometimes people unfairly malign Boris as like a sort of Frazetta copycat but really they're quite they're quite different in the sense that Frazetta was more focused on like capturing motion and dynamics um Boris was more focused on really uh presenting the figure in a classical in a classical way a, a classically you know academic correct way you know um I think there's a difference there. Frazetta really was not stressing over getting the figure nearly as tight. He was more focused on composition. He was more focused on motion and he was coming at it from much more of a painterly sort of like impressionistic standpoint, right? I mean, he was still getting it really tight, really realistic, but it was like, I mean, Frazetta I think was, was definitely a looser but I think Boris had more sort of knowledge of, you know, how to really push the realism in terms the realism of his values. And, you know, he had a, a great understanding of shape language in terms of how to apply to the block ends of color and just, you know, really great at like um, rendering human flesh, let's just say. And I do think that he was, but you know, he may have vibed off Rosetta here and there because I think Rosetta came a little bit before him. But um, he's definitely not a copycat. I mean, they did the same subject matter, but like their painting techniques were really different. I mean, they both tended to, I think, paint thin, but Boris definitely had more of a drilled down like uh, process where he would really go thin with the human figures, and like not necessarily the case with Rosetta, right? Um, Frazetta was much more sort of carefree. 
Not that Boris was stiff, he wasn't. He was always great at capturing gesture as well. But he was going for different things. And also, I think Frazetta worked a little bit more from memory, too. Um, Boris was, from what I understand, used quite a few models. A la Rockwell and a lot of these Golden Age of Illustration guys. So... But yeah, I'm really enjoying how this block end's coming in. I'm really enjoying sort of, you know, just watching this thing come together already. I can kind of see where it's going. Uh, it's going to be real fun, you know, sort of blending all these shapes together. This will probably be a relatively short video. Just trying to get this heat. I mean, the one thing is just, again, though, he, you know, he has this deep, the shadow here, there's quite a bit of brown in the shadow, right? So I could go here. This is in more of a, of a red key already, but I could just shift this more into red. To get that sort of core shadow. And then I'm already at 91% opacity. Let's crank up that. Why it's not... Let me see something. Hmm. Well, in any events... weird how it wouldn't set to pressure, right? Let's go above it. Ah, oh, there we go. So I switched it on a different layer and all of a sudden it magically goes to where it's supposed to go. Let's knock that down to And I'm really actually going to commit to this dark here. Even though um, it's a little bit more saturated of a dark than is actually in my figure. Uh, maybe not. Maybe I want to knock it back a little bit. That's about, that's more like it. Or maybe not. Let's try this. Give her a nice, elegant, long neck. Let's get the 
hard to find that. And then of course, I'm just going to continue shifting this into an even more red key. I usually don't go quite this close to true black when I'm doing a face, but he's got that contrast popped up. But he also has quite a bit of red down here. And then, of course, we want to come back to this core black. And I'm seeing a million things I can do to this, but I want to finish one thought process first. Not bad. Not bad at all. Like I said, I'm just going through, blocking in different shapes here. Adding a little more red maybe to the the lips here than we might normally get, but
quite a bit of heat down here. Got a little bit of an underbite now. Notice how I'm also trying to stay, I'm trying to stay far. I'm trying to stay far away from the the image. Trying to think of what else, what what Boris has worked on. He's worked on um oh well, he's done again tons of sci-fi, erotica, barbarians, Conan, he's worked for Wizards of Magic, um, Marvel, you know, you name it, you've probably seen his work somewhere, right? Um, let's, bring, let's bring these lips up a little bit. Because she's got fuller lips, I tend to make my Figure's lips a little thinner. I'm gonna zoom in for a sec here so I can get a better control. That's better. And then we want to go, I tend to go green for my blacks around the eyes. So then I tend to also follow the James Gurney playbook of like yellow, red, and blue in terms of breaking up color zones on the face. And I sort of did the same thing here with the mule. Um, you could see it's quite a bit of blue if you really look. Gray blue in his beard. And there's even some hints of like a purple blue down here. Here as well. Just a little cooler in general by that chin area. A lot of heat around here. And then we, of course, we have our yellow up there. So <clears throat> that's that, right? And I'm just keeping track of the time here. Probably cut this in another 10 minutes or so.
And it's good to just sort of look at it at actual size, right? So look at this at actual size. It's coming along all right so far. Definitely gonna have to soften things up quite a bit, but I'm liking how the blocking is going. And then if we go to image adjustments and we go to black and white, I forgot in order to pull this off, all of our images, all of our layers must be on black and white. So let's do that. Let's merge some of these. Let's merge some of these bad boys down, right? So merge down. Merge down. And then we'll go edit adjustments, black and white. And actually, if I were going to teach this, particular method I would recommend people do uh, black and white first. You can see I need to go back in and add a few highlights uh, right now. I'm getting most of the values fairly correct, but I definitely have to go in and probably just add some highlights around the eyes here, pop the nose, pop the chin, right? Really go in with that yellow, bring a little bit more heat to her and uh, go from there. So it's good to do this occasionally as well as you're, you know, doing your figure. So I'm just going to cancel that. And I'm actually going to go in and do that. And there you can see that this is a cream white. I'm actually going to go in and boom, pop, pop out some highlights here. right above here. There, here. And then we can go back here. We can cut, we can cut it back a little bit. into more of a yellow key. There we go, and then boom, a little bit there. A little bit in the ear. Actually, probably, the ear is probably more in shadow. I'll save that. <clears throat> Let's view actual size. You can see that just right away makes a huge difference. I mean, just very much just really creates much more contrast, sort of similar to the contrast I have here in, in the mule space. And then I would come in and I would just, what I'll do to round out the session for today is I'll just go in and create some sculptural mass by going in and massing and blocking in these dark tones around her head you know, sort of really combing that hair that she has, that sort of lush dark hair.
Of course, this is all going to get feathered out and it's going to get softened. <clears throat> and I actually don't think I'm going <laughs> to release this next week. I'll probably put this out pretty in fairly rapid succession just because I don't know what my schedule is going to be like going into August. I'm not going to have as much availability. To, to be doing these for a bit because I'm moving up to Burlington, Vermont. So that is all going to be a huge factor in how I'll be able to put out these videos. And you can see just from me doing these little things you know, really going in and just committing to my darks, committing to my lights right away. I able to really fairly quickly sort of nail in a nice, a very sort of nice face, right? Boris is, he's really one of a kind. He's an amazing artist and great guy to learn from. I'm walking in the footsteps of giants, <laughs> as they say. Uh, from what I heard, he's a really cool dude. I know a few of my colleagues that have studied with him and and James Gurney too, apparently is a very, you know, very nice, nice guy, which I'm not surprised at all based on, you know, the interviews I've seen with him. Seems like a really solid guy as well. And uh, love to study with him at some point. If he's still running courses, I do believe he has a gum road, which I'm considering signing up for. And I rather like that. Let's look at it from actual size and then I'll cut this video for today. All right. <laughs> So that's looking good, I think. Let's flip it back around to its original orientation. Just double check it one more time. Not bad at all. All right, that'll do it for today. I'm gonna stop the recording now, but I wish you all farewell. And until next week, have a great day and stay safe in the seat. All right, take care guys.